picture this. You're a marketing manager and running a Marketo instance, and your sales team comes to you and says, we need 50 leads that are ready to buy right now. How do you answer that question? Well, I'm Michael Tucker, founder of The Conversion Store, and today I want to show you in your Marketo instance how to identify if, if you've got 150,000 people that are in your Marketo database, here's how you identify the top 50 of them that are ready to go ahead and make a purchase with you or your sales team. And really the key to this is being able to kind of measure how engaged they are and to be able to have kind of one uniform way to be able to, to actually say this person is a fit for the product or service that I'm offering and their, their behavior is telling me that they are uh, ready to go and just need to be able to speak to the right person to make a sale. Let's jump into Marketo now and we'll see exactly how to get this done. So first we want to take a look at the different types of scores that are available in Marketo. We have two main types of scores and then uh, a third type of scoring that gets used if you have Marketo Sales Insights in your Marketo instance to be able to share some of this scoring information to CRM users for uh, the best bets, which is the flames and the stars that you usually will see inside of a CRM instance that has Marketo Sales Insights installed. But for today's example, we're just going to talk about the two main types of scores that are captured inside of a Marketo scoring program, behavioral and demographic. So what are behavioral scores? Well, behavioral scores are scores that are created as your Marketo instance is measuring different types of actions that some of your leads are providing to different types of marketing assets. And so these could be things like web pages that they're visiting, uh, emails that they're interacting with if they're opening and clicking on them um, and taking other types of actions uh, to, to on your emails. Um, advertising. So we talked about in a previous Marketo Minutes episode about using Marketo AdBridge, but you can also track uh, how they're converting on display advertising by tracking UTM tags, for example, um, and uh, different different ways to engage with advertising and social media form fills, things like that. And then the final piece is talking about events. So live events is just an example that we put on here. Uh, of course, these days a lot more about webinars. The other type of scoring that are is covered inside of Marketo is demographic scoring. And so this is scoring that is handling all of the different types of characteristics of the people and the companies that they work for that are inside of your Marketo instance. So in this example, what are the job titles of the different people that are filling out forms and interacting with your uh, Marketo uh, marketing uh, assets and uh, where do they sit on the org chart and how do what company do they belong in um, are, are other types of uh, demographic scoring values you could do demographic scoring based on the geographic location um, or the number of employees the total headcount inside of the companies that they work for and so these are all pieces of information that don't change over time usually um, but they are pieces that that talk about the the person themselves and you're really trying to measure the value of the scores against your ideal client profile um, that, that just kind of talks a little bit about what uh, you are trying to reach from an audience perspective and how good of a fit are the people that are being created inside of your Marketo instance against what your marketing communications plan is uh, that you're trying to, to, to reach out to and engage. And as I mentioned here if you own Marketo Sales Insights, you've probably heard or seen about the best bets functionality. And this is functionality that is built on scoring, on a relative score. And what they're trying to do with these stars and flames is to really talk about which leads are engaging uh, relative to all of the other leads that you have inside of your CRM and how fast are they uh, are they uh, meeting that engagement and so those uh, those metrics that you see inside of Marketo Sales Insights are powered by scores and they're really just visualizations that help you to be able to see um, what type of, uh, uh, of, of scoring information you're getting across all of these different leads.
And so the la last piece on this is this is tying into your Marketo database within um, two or three different fields that'll sit inside of your person record. So we're going to jump to a histogram because what we do at the conversion store is usually we will uh, draft out a histogram to be able to show the total distribution of these two types of uh, scoring metrics that are inside of your database. And we do this to give you kind of a snapshot of, of the current scoring model that you've got right now and what we want to work towards. So let's take a look at that and then visualize this and we'll jump into the Marketo instance afterwards. So this is a histogram that is using some artificial data that we've created and it's basically measuring the scoring of uh, in this case a behavioral scoring metric and it's basically breaking out into bins of 10 so deciles and so you'll see here that we have on the x value of this 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on. And these are the numeric scoring values that get added up and tabulated for each lead. So the Y value here is the frequency, is the, the number of leads that you see that are falling within these, these specific bins, these values for behavioral score. Now one of the things that we want to look here, if, uh, if you have a background in statistics, you're probably already familiar with this. Um, and so really what we're trying to look at here is what is the distribution? What is the modality? What's the, uh, which scores have the highest score? So it looks like 10 is the most common behavioral score in this particular Marketo database uh, with 59,426 leads or per Marketo person records, if you will. Um, but what we're trying to do, and part of the reason why this is an effective scoring model, is not the largest group, but we want to be able to properly see that there are leads and enough leads, a sizable enough uh, size of leads, that are going into the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s. Um, and this group here is a smaller group, but this is the bread and butter, if you will, that's telling us that if we spend the Pareto principle think about that right that 80 20 rule is that 80 percent of your business comes from 20 percent of your leads or your customers so who is that 20 percent well that 20 percent is going to be anybody above the 50 60 70 uh, scores here so um, that's a sign of a good scoring model and that's something that we want to work towards Whereas if you had a scoring model that did not have a distribution like this, so in this case we had demographic scoring, and you can see that there are over 12,000 leads that have a score of 5. There are uh, a little under 4,000 leads that have a score of 10. But that doesn't really give you a very good differentiation. You could argue and say, well, I guess the 10 is a better demographic score. But if you have 4,000 people that you have to contact, and let's say that you are a smaller shop and you have six sales reps to be able to contact 4,000 leads off of this demographic score, they're going to be at it a long time. And that may or may not be effective depending on the size of the purchase that you have and some of the other, the, the time, the sales cycle. Um, so you really want to keep in mind that if you can do a much more detailed uh, scoring program and you can use the power of your Marketo instance to allow Marketo to, to build out criteria to judge um, this 4,000 leads, I might be able to split that up even further and tell you the top 200 leads that uh, that have a really high score here that maybe are above 15 um, and that would be an effective score so we know by looking at the histogram here that the demographic score in this particular Marketo instance needs to be fixed and that's why we will build out a histogram okay so in this final piece we want to dive into the Marketo instance now and just show you an example of the lead scoring programs that you can just import uh, and, and, and kind of where we go from, uh, from this point. So inside of my operational folder, I'll usually build out a scoring folder that'll have two different lead scoring programs. Uh, op scoring behavior, op scoring demographic. And those cover each of the different criteria that we talked about earlier on. And notice that in each of these 
programs, their default programs, they're, uh, they have the channel of operational, so they're really not tracking status per se. But what we do inside of them is we have a whole series of scoring tokens. And these are basically tracking the, uh, the different types of engagements, in this case behavioral engagements, that I can have uh, inside of this Marketo instance. And I can add and remove these as I want to too, by the way. I can drag in new tokens and I can say form fills out five times and uh, put in you know a plus 30 value if I wanted to. Okay. So these are totally customizable, and that's one of the great things about Marketo's scoring program setup. And so if I look inside of my programs here, um, I can build out customized uh, smart campaigns. So these are all my interactions, uh, are basically the different types of, of smart campaigns. Um, so let's just take a look in one of these and see what the anatomy of them is like. So they're all trigger programs, uh, or trigger smart campaigns uh, in, at the behavioral level. And so this is sort of the default criteria, but you can update this however you want to. Um, and they all have the same two flow steps in them. So person score and behavioral score. Person score is a field that sort of tracks the um, sort of the cumulative scoring value of, of a total Marketo person. And so you'll see a, ch a change score uh, in our demographic program as well too. That'll also include person score. Um, so we have a, a, a tokens that are here that are making use of the tokens we just talked about earlier on, and that's plugging in this value email dash clicks links into both the behavioral and the person score. Um, and so we'll, we'll we'll cover off the person score in a second here, but the last piece that I want to kind of highlight inside of this program is that you can build additional scoring uh, criteria as well. You're not limited to just the interactions that are here. And so we'll have a, uh, a, a, a set of smart campaigns that where we can put in um, either has opportunity or make a trigger and says was created opportunity um, and uh, and put in different criteria and uh, put in different scoring values uh, uh, against that criteria as well too to just drag these in and say person score and say behavior score um, and and so so no problem if you want to customize this this specific example here donation high value was for a demonstration I was putting on for the higher ed uh, Marketo user group a couple of years ago um, so so again they're in the nonprofit space so they look at donations um, other types of groups might have different types of criteria uh, and then one final thing before we move on from behavior scoring is that we also put in a, um, a decrease score, no activity program here. And this was a trick that I learned from Elliot Lowe at Ringlead, um, who is a, a Marketo Champion alumni. Uh, and he uh, really explained in a previous Marketo user group that I have for our manufacturing user group that... Um, you should have a score for decay to, to be able to say if you're not interacting over a specific period of time, then in Marketo, we should decrease your score and, uh, and, and say, so if you filled out a, um, a form fill and then you didn't touch the Marketo instance or any of the other marketing collateral for two or three or five months, um, probably, probably a pretty good indicator that you've moved on and, and decided to make a purchase from a, a competitor. Um, so we want to try and diminish the score so that if you come back to make a purchase decision at a later date, um, then, then you know, we can start from the beginning and, and all of the other actions that we might trigger off as you're climbing up the uh, scoring value of your behavioral scores, um, everything that we have triggered from like a 10 or a 20 or a 30, um, that those can be reapplied when you're going back through those processes. Uh, and then the final thing, one thing that Elliot had kind of mentioned is, is have a, pro, a smart campaign that will say if your decay continues to happen and you wind up with a behavioral score of minus 300 or less, um, we want to reset that to zero. So uh, pretty easy to do. You can, you can take these scoring values and you can actually just say equals zero. Oops, excuse me. Uh, equals zero. 
but the the point behind that is is that um, if they come to a minus 300 and they start re-engaging again they'll wind up going to minus 290 minus 260 minus 150 and those values are not set up in the scoring model to, to really make sense right you don't want to send leads over to your sales team and say here uh, interact with this lead it just moved to a minus 260 that doesn't make any sense from their perspective so we want to try and reset them to zero and in the last piece here so we'll talk about demographic scoring and very simply it's very similar to behavioral scoring same series of tokens and you'll see we're looking at job titles instead of form fills we're looking at industry values uh, we're looking at annual revenue if you collect that from your audience um, and the other difference to talk about here with this demographic values because they don't happen as frequently as the um, as the the behavioral ones uh, you can actually set these, this one's set to a, a trigger, the last one there, but this one, annual revenue, is set to be a batch. Um, and this can be run at one in the morning when your Marketo instance isn't busy for the particular server that you might be on. And so you could say, well, why do I want to do a batch smart campaign and not use a trigger? Well, the reason for that is to be able to save processing power and also the annual revenue of your of the company that you're trying to track for your clients well that's only going to change once a year uh, so really do you really have to calculate that on the very same instance where it arrives um, if you know that that value isn't going to change um, you might be looking at a, a, you know a scoring value that might be maybe maybe five maybe ten at most but it won't be too much more than that so it won't have a huge difference in terms of where that particular lead is placed um, in your life cycle processing for example uh, depending on how uh, how high a relevant scoring has in your life cycle processing um, so we'll talk about that a little bit later but just note that you know they don't these don't all have to be triggers and scoring does not have to be updated instantaneously um, it really depends on what you are what kind of data that you are looking for in terms of your ideal customer profile and uh, in your marketing communications plan so make sure that the um, the business is driving that technology and not the other way around and that's one of the reasons why consultants like us exist is to be able to help with things like that so I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at marketing at conversionstore.com or visit our website at conversionstore.com and we'd be pleased to answer any of those questions that you might have.